If you saw the Green River show. Nice. Oh, that's an explosion. That was a great take. Where we were catching fish after fish after fish. Part of them were on Chernobyl ants. Part of them were on this homeboy hopper. Oh, oh yeah. That might be a big one. It was hopper season on the upper green. When you get hoppers out, fish go nuts. Nice. And this is a great bug. Gorgeous. Fun. Great fish on a dry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Familiar Waters and FWFishing.com. I'm Mike Pulaski. Today, we are talking about the homeboy hopper. And I'll tell you the story how it got its name as we tie. But this is a great go-to bug for me. It is super versatile. You can use it for hoppers. You can use it for stones. You can use it as a searching pattern. You can use it dry dropper. Uh, and I tie it with some unique properties because the biggest problem for foam dries when you fish them is they will flip over or they will spin on the hook. So I've got a couple things in here to stop it from spinning on the hook. And I tie it super light up top so that it won't flip over and land upside down, which won't catch fish. So we're going to hit the vise right now. I'm going to show you the homeboy hopper. Don't forget, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. You can also go to fwfishing.com for all of our flies, all of our videos, all of our updates, all of our blog articles that are going to help you with the learning curve in fly fishing. If you're new, it's going to help you get better in a hurry. Uh, if you're a seasoned veteran, you're always trying to learn, always trying to get better. So fwfishing.com, hit the blog there as well. Now, let's hit the vise, homeboy hopper, and it's one of my go-to bugs. So we're going to start with a Tiemco 5262 hook, uh, which is a nymph hook, but you can also tie hoppers on it. And it's going to be our keel weighting for this fly. And so super important that we have this fly keel weighted. One of the big things with hoppers is they tend to flop over if you put too much weight on top of the hook. And so this is going to be keel weighted. I'm going to keep the weight down low with the hook and legs. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. But so super easy, 5262. My uh, thread, Danville, uh, kind of my go-to. Waxed, flat waxed, mono. It's got a little stretch to it, which I like, especially when I'm working with foam flies. So I'm going to start winding that on. This hook, I forgot to say, is in a size 10. You can tie it you know, down to a 14 if you want to. If you've got really small hoppers that you're working on, this stream in particular that I'm thinking of, that I'm tying this bug for, has really light yellow-gray grass in July when the hoppers come off. And so it's going to be a real light body. And they have anywhere from size 10 to size 12. And so that's what I'm looking for in terms of this hopper today. One of the cool things I like to do to start this thing is I tie in the ice dub and pick the body color that you want. It's a great uh, opportunity to kind of get a little contrast in there if you want contrast. The bottom of hoppers is always lighter than the top and the sides. And so if you're going to get contrast, get it with a lighter dub on the bottom. I like the ice dub. gives a little flash, a little sparkle to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dubbing loop here so that it's not that I want the extra kind of hang off straggling dubbing like you normally get out of a dubbing loop. It's that I want to be able to create the right taper. And so all hoppers are tapered uh, and, and it's pretty obvious on the taper that you can see. And so you can see as I'm doing this, I'm creating a taper with more and heavier ice dub towards the front so that as I finish, this bug builds out, and it builds out right to about the shoulder of the hopper. And so I want to give myself lots of dubbing in there that I can build it out, build that nice taper, and spin that dubbing loop. Uh, and the other thing that a dubbing loop is going to do for you is foam flies tend to slide, and the foam will move around the hook, and it's really obnoxious and annoying. When you make this dubbing loop, rather than having dubbing around, which can also slide, now you're going to have a solid body to tie this thing to. And so putting the dubbing loop on here serves a couple of purposes, but having a solid body and then being able to build that really good taper uh, are the two most important as far as I'm concerned. So create that loop, kind of set your angle. And if you don't like using the rotary, on your vise, that's okay. You can do this by hand too. But keep these tight. Every three or four, go ahead and give it a good tug to make sure it's solid. And build that taper out. Start to build it up towards the top. You can see it's, it's not a huge taper, 
just a good taper as it builds towards the head. So I'm going to stop it just back of the eye. I'm going to stop it just back from the eye. And this is where the shoulder, for lack of a better term, on the hopper starts. And you can see that taper all the way up to the shoulder, where the wings tie in, where the legs tie in, the thorax, everything in there. And then at the head, it actually starts to taper the opposite way. And so that's what I'm building. When I build that taper all the way up there, that's the shoulder to me. And you can see it's got a great taper on the bottom. And then it makes it easy now when we apply our next material, which is foam. And this is great. You can get stream. I think Streamborn has great cutters that you can use um, for cutting out different body styles. I love them. I use them for wings. You're going to see the wing on this one. Um, but they're great for cutting out bodies. I cut this one by hand to show you that you can cut these by hand and they'll be perfect. Uh, you just get the taper that you want for your area. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out a half of a hook length here. And that's how far I want to be beyond the hook shank with this body. And so this is where you determine the size of your fly uh, when you're fishing it, 14, 12, whatever it is. Um, if I want to be just an extra, so an extra third of the total body will be hanging off the end. And then once you do this, and here's why we tied that dubbing loop, you're going to get some super glue or zappa gap or whatever you use. I like the gorilla glue here. And you're just going to paint the top of that dub that you just set down. Let it dry for just a second and maybe clean some of that up. Don't have to use your hands like I'm doing, but clean some of that up. And then pull that body down and press it in. Okay. We want to hold that on there and this is going to keep that foam from twisting around the hook with the combination of the uh, dubbing loop, which is now solidly on there. It ain't going anywhere. And now you've got it glued down. Now this body won't spin. And so that's super important with these things because it sucks to play with these things all day and try to work with them. And so that's why I tied this. The other thing, you can see how thin this foam is on the top here. And that's because all the hoppers and bigger bugs, the Chernobyl ants and all that, the problem with them is they tend to flip sometimes. And that's when they get to be a pain. You got to flip them back over and it may pull it out of your lane. This is super light. This bug is super light on the top. We're giving the profile of the hopper, but we're not necessarily adding a ton of bulk to do it. So anyway, tie it on. Give yourself a little bit of space back from the hook eye. I'll show you why in a second. But five, six wraps, get it secured down. And then you're going to travel over the top. And then you're going to line up straight wraps again. About four, five wraps, whatever you like. And grasshoppers are really segmented. And so by doing this, you travel back again, another segmented wrap, and travel back over the top again from that same spot. And one more segmented wrap here in the back. And this is going to fold that body over a little bit and give you the back end taper on the hopper. You can see that back end taper here. This is where I'm going to make sure that it's set where I want it. But the back end taper to that hopper, so you got that nice taper building up towards the front. You've got your segmentation in the hopper. And then as you come back forward, now wrap back over the top and the same gaps. You can just put one in if you want, but I like the symmetry of putting a couple in, getting it even. And there you have it. So your hopper body right there, skinny, but tapered, super clean. And it's still really light on top of this hook. So the keel weighting is going to bring that hook down. Remember when hoppers hit the water, they are super heavy. And so they struggle, they're rough. Um, and doing this with the body and getting that segmentation underneath uh, and, and keeping it light on top is super important. So next, I have these centipede legs. And I forget who makes them, but if you Google, we'll actually put a link down below to all of these materials. So... You'll know where to get them, but these centipede legs, they do them in tan and black and tan and brown and a whole bunch of different colors. Really cool. Uh, I tie a little knot in them for that back leg. I don't think you have to, but I like it. It makes me feel more confident, and anything that makes you feel more confident on a fly is super cool. So tie it in and fish it.
So I'm going to tie that back at an angle. And a lot of guys tie their stuff up top and then pull it over. I would prefer to set this as I tie it because hopper legs especially, and when you tie the knot in them, tend to be tough to keep organized the way that you want them. And so if I tie it in right the first time, right length and everything, then I don't have to worry about this. It takes a little bit of extra time, but not so much as it would take to organize these legs on the stream. And so there you go. You have them tied in. We'll cut those later and we'll get that all figured out. Next, a lot of guys put hair on the top of the bug. I don't like hair. I mean, I do like hair. Don't get me wrong, but not for this hopper because again, I want it to be light up here. I want this thing to land perfect every single time it lands. And so to do that, I'm going to use CDC instead. And I'm using this sulfur or orange here. And it's got a cool little color to it. I don't know if the fish are gonna see it very much, but it adds flotation. Uh, it gives a little bit of bulk to the fly, a little bit of height to the fly. So you get that profile, um, but it doesn't add a ton of weight. And it also gives it a really cool parachute effect as it drops. So I'm going to tie that right about the length of the body. A little bit short is okay. A little bit long is okay. Whatever kind of serves your purpose the way that you like it, tie it that way. So get those rubber legs out of the way. And lock that in. And there you go. And so that'll be your underwing right there. I'm going to snip that off and give myself a couple more wraps to make sure it's secured and locked down. Next, I'm going to tie in the overwing. And again, Streamborn, link in the comment section down below. Uh, I think it's Spirit River that actually makes this wing material, but there's a ton of it out there. Easy to find. We'll put a link for you. Streamborn makes the die that you cut this with. And I just take that wing, I cut it to length, and I want this to be just shorter than the overall length of the fly here. So you can see, now it looks kind of buggy. You got that CDC coming off of it. You got the wing stacked up on top of it. You got those legs hanging off of it. And it's getting to look super buggy here. And so, we uh, the, re the reason this fly got its name is because... We were fishing a hopper hatch up in the Eastern Sierras, uh, which can be fantastic over there if you hit it right. And I was talking to my buddy and he said, he said, uh, what are you fishing for that hopper? I said, look at this homeboy. And this is a fly that I can use for hoppers, for stone flies as a searching pattern, like a stimmy. Like you can use it for anything, dry dropper. And so I started calling it the homeboy hopper. Didn't have a name to that point. And now just the homeboy hopper is how it got it uh, from a fateful day fishing on the eastern Sierras. So now that we are up to the front and the foam in the front, I'm going to clip those legs and I'm going to tie forward. If you notice on a hopper, and we should put up a picture right now, that it has a segmented head. Its head is separate from its body. And so that's what we're trying to emulate here is that head being separate from the hopper body, a separate piece. And so in order to do that, we're going to wrap, tie it on. This also secures it and keeps it from twisting. And you can see you get that segmentation down here, separating that head from the body. We're going to fold this over in a second. Then I'm going to take just a little bit more of that dub, that ice dub. And I'm going to wrap it around the middle here. I see a lot of guys dub over the top of everything. And that's cool if that's your jam. Um, I like kind of the neatness of having things tucked away. And so I wrap my way back with that ice dub. The next, I'm going to pull this back over to give myself that cool hopper head here. So wrap it, give it one, two, three, couple pulls in there. So now you have that cool hopper head on the front that kind of sticks out, gives you an aiming point little overwing coming off the back. I'm going to shorten that. And then at this point, if you like putting a hot spot on your fly, I have never personally had a problem seeing hoppers when they're in the water. But if you like putting a hot spot on your fly, this is the time to do it. You can tie little 
you know, orange hot spot in here if you want, something like that. Put that on top and, you know, wrap it in. Like I said, I, I've never had a hard time seeing hoppers in the water, so I do not need to put a hot spot on it. But some guys like it, they dig it, and that's where you're at. So I'll wrap that across the top a couple times, and then I'm going to bring the thread on top and to the front, to the hook eye. Put a couple wraps to keep everything together and tight. And then I'm just going to put a little whip finish on it. Clear those rubber legs. Trim. And then just going to cut these to length. grab them and just put the knots together at the top remember we tied those knots in get a measurement for where you want to trim and snip away and the same in the front I want to make these front legs a little bit shorter than the back legs because that's the way it works in hopper anatomy so shorten those down super fun to cut and there you have it Super lightweight, easy to cast. The homeboy hopper will become a go-to hopper for you. And it's not just for hopper season. You can throw it for squalas. You can throw it for sto uh, golden stones when you tie it in the right color. It kind of does a little bit of everything. Just get it all organized uh, and carry a bunch of them in your box. Super lightweight, super easy to tie. Yeah, as you saw, it's pretty quick um, and gives the profile. You see that nice little hole inside there actually gives that hopper's eye look as well. So cool bug. It's a uh, fantastic bug for hoppers, fantastic bugs for stones, fantastic dry and dropper, and you should have it in your box.